couple minutes until they get their notification that we are doing a surprise live. Not planned. Surprise. Just kidding. Let's try to get No, this. we're not just kidding. We're going to be on here. I'm used to looking there. I got a new phone. It's a little funky. Well, that'll help me. Typically takes like a couple of minutes for people to yep. start saying like, hey, hey, Matthew, how are you? I'm feeling it'll people start rolling in then we can get on to our, our nightly task on what we have to get done up here in the apothecary. Yeah, it's cold. It is definitely cold. Um, I think today was 18. I don't know. It's don't cold. Know. It got down to like six. Yeah, it was cold. So, hey, Castle Hives, how are you? Hi. What's everyone getting into this beautiful Sunday night? Anything exciting? And Matt says it's cold. Hey, Bama, how are you? Everyone's going good out here. Um, we have been just kind of hunkering down. We got a hit with another little snowstorm. Um, we did not get anywhere near the amount of snow that they were calling for. Yeah, I think um, we got like, what, two inches? I think about three. two inches. So it wasn't too, too bad, but... I did see that we're supposed to get another storm, I think, in the next couple of weeks, so. So the butcher, the baker, and the case maker, they finally got themselves shoveled out. How much oh snow my did, gosh. I bet how you much guys, snow did they get? I bet they probably got at least two feet. Got Alabama. I will send you some snow, Home, Hope Homestead. <laughs> North Dakota, Kentucky. Kentucky. Hi, Southern Maryland. Hey, that's close by. So, we just finished dinner and I'll prop this over here. Yep. Um, uh, we just finished dinner and one of our, our nightly, weekly tasks, and I've been trying to do it on Sunday, at least in my head, I'm doing it on Sunday. Um, but basically doing a refrigerator kind of clean out and then what is left over, we put into our freeze dryer. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to do that while we're doing a live. I might bring it a little bit. Bring it a little I'm closer. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer so you can see what we're doing. Because this freeze dryer thing, it's like space food meets homesteading farm food. And yes, you guys are in the apothecary. You're just in a, a little bit of a different Different angle. Different angle. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the freeze dryer, I don't know if you guys know what her name is, but we did name her. So if you don't know what her name is, we will tell you. Her name is? Elsa. Elsa. So one of the things that we have been really doing a good job on trying to continue is the food preservation and putting food up and making sure that we have it you know, set up. So I've got, um, I did some homemade chili tonight and then we did some leftover spaghetti sauce and then we had some baked beans from last, last night. Right. Um, but I don't want to throw this away. And so that's why we're breaking out the freezer. Let me keep an eye on this. I'm, I'm really good at reading from a distance, but. Oh, somebody, uh, okay. Let's see. Let's go back. Um, Oh, the butcher, the baker, and the casing maker 18. got 18 inches. Yes. Uh, we got a what up from Nevada. Hello, Nevada. We got family out there. We got Florida. 24 degrees in Florida last night. No. Too Florida. cold. Yeah, that's a little too chilly for Florida. Yep. 65 in California, and the bees are flying. Mm. Minnesota. Uh, Terry is saying this is so excited that she found you are live. Hi. Um, Once two, I get this set up, we'll probably, I'll sit back down and we'll, we'll chat a little bit. Yep. 
And then a question, did we ever get maple syrup? And then we got a hello from New Hampshire. I have not tapped my maple trees. Uh, I did find a few maple trees, but a lot of them are still a little bit too small on our property. So I've got my, they're on the radar, um, but I have not tapped any. But I did read, and I will do this, uh, I would consider, and I ha if I do it, I need to do it like in the next couple of weeks, but um, tapping the black walnut. You oh. can tap the black walnut. And make a black. But it's just a really rich. Just got to cook it down because yeah. I know that's how they do that up in New Hampshire. So that's my, that would be a goal. Okay, so these are our freeze drying trays. This is a medium freeze dryer. And there's a few different ways that we've learned to do this. And I'm kind of cheating a little bit tonight because I want to go ahead and just plan on getting them in the, in the right. freeze dryer. I would prefer to go ahead and like put this in the freezer on the trays to be frozen because it makes the process a little bit quicker. Um, but I am kind of just wanting to get it in there so that I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. I think the big thing about the freeze dryer is trying to kind of make all the trays um, equal. Mm -hmm. Well, consistency with about the yeah. same type of food in a way. Like it, they say it's a little bit better. And then also not loading them too much, not loading them up to the point where they're just too heavy because it, the process takes a lot longer. But these are, this was from our our farm between the tomatoes and onions. Um, onions and then of course the beef and I don't want to waste it. Uh, it's good pot of chili. The beans are not ours but that's okay. Oh we got asked if we made it to the seed exchange. I did not. I attempted to make it thought about making it that was about as much as I was able to uh, to kind of do. I felt bad but we had some stuff going on with the kiddos, so I had to um, hang out and get that done. Okay, so I'm gonna even this one out. Okay. Now these two trays will probably, I can probably fit when I'm done, after it's freeze dried, into at least two Mylar bags. And then once we do this, it's gonna take a little while, um, to freeze dry. Look at it. Eat my chili. Uh, but it's going to take a little while. But then once it's done, what I'll do is store it and put it in the Mylar bags and set it aside. And then um, stored properly. This can last 25 years, which is crazy. I've had a lot of people ask me the difference between freeze drying your food and dehydrating. And I do want to do like a whole video kind of about the difference between the two. Um, but basically dehydrating, you're not able to truly reconstitute it um, like the freeze dried. And then it, nutritionally, it doesn't take out anything. Um, it, it leaves all of the nutritional benefits inside. Now, what I'm really excited about the freeze dryer is Come this season, come this summer, after we were starting to do our, our herb harvesting and everything, instead of drying uh, a lot of our herbs, I'm gonna go ahead and just plan on freeze drying them. Okay. I'm sorry, I wanna read. Yeah, honey and real maple syrup between the two. Oh, maybe we need be, to find a. That would be really good. A maple um, syrup so maple. how do I use the chili after it's freeze dried? So when I want to use it, all I have to do is reconstitute it with water, and then it turns right back literally into back into the same consistency of of the chili. Um, you want to use this one? It's got no, the I, same tomato. Okay, it's okay. I brought all this right. one. And then I have some of our homemade spaghetti sauce. Now, here's what's really fun. Um, this spaghetti sauce, and really actually the chili too, I initially canned it, and so it's been downstairs in my, my pantry, 
but what's kind of exciting is I can re constitute it. Well, no, like having the the tomatoes that were from our garden canning it. So it's like we're getting a second Second preservation, a second preservation out of it. Um, And then again, like our 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 beef. And don't judge me. I am using a plastic a plastic Tupperware on this one. I've been really good about using glass jars, but every once in a while, one one or two will sneak into our our cabinet. So when this is done, what I'll do is I'll share this on a picture so you guys can see what it looks like after. All right, so. Got two chilies. I have one more tray that I need to do. I think I'm gonna do it. The beans? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, the beans. Duh. I almost forgot. Um, recently ordered my. Oh, no. Recently ordered my. And really. Oh. Thank you, Rosa. Yes. This is what I really love about the leftover thought process is being able to just put it up, you know, put it away. I, I laughed because after this Thanksgiving, all of my outside of the leftovers, you know, like the next day leftovers, but all of those leftovers, we uh, did go ahead and freeze dry. So we're pretty much done for Thanksgiving for next year if we want to be. Or at least a couple of servings. So all of our stuffing. Yeah. All right. So these are just some baked beans. I'm gonna put this one. Nothing in crazy. In the fridge. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough room on these trays or not. So I did bring up a little bit of some of our, our beef liver. Um, the raw beef liver. And I was gonna plan on freezing that for some dog treats. Um, but we got enough. We got enough stuff here. Well, we weren't gonna. We weren't sure if this was gonna be two trays, three trays, two trays of chili, or one tray of chili. So we brought enough stuff up just in case if we wanted to. And ideally, to save a little time, we could have thrown these in the freezer and let them freeze. But we're doing it this way tonight. Okay. So. All right. I'm sorry. I'm going to come back to you guys because... Yeah, you're not in that picture. you got to move No, your... I know. Oh, okay. That freeze dryer, I still have about nine minutes. So with the freeze dryer, it does need to go ahead and get kind of warmed up. It takes about 15 minutes all together. Um, and so in about nine minutes, I'll pop them in there and then get it kind of activated. And so you guys can see that process. It's a pretty cool... You want to take a picture of this? It's a pretty cool device for sure. Take a picture okay. of the trees. Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm going to scroll back a little bit okay. just to see if I've seen everybody. Yeah, yes, the mangas get some leftovers for sure. And our chickens too, which is, you know, certain produce, like if I have any kitchen scraps or, or lettuce or the ends of the celery or just the stuff that we're not going to necessarily use um that goes into our our pig bucket it's a very fancy food grade white pig bucket um that we keep in our kitchen i would like to maybe one day get like a fancy pig bucket but a white bucket just does just fine so all of our leftovers like that uh eggshells onion skins you know things unless i'm making broth it all kind of goes into that and then we typically will boil some hot water um when right before we go out to feed the animals especially with the pigs and they get a nice little hot some hot soup especially this time of year oh rosa got her tea i know i saw it's exciting and she's enjoying it yay which one did you get rosa so I think she got the herbal paw and I think she got the, the other one. Um, so we got another New Hampshire. They said they got two feet of snow and they were only supposed to get six to 12 inches. American bees. Uh, so my bee suit, the suits that I've mainly worn, the tan one and that teal blue one, which was actually my daughter's, but I kind of confiscated it. Um, 
for at least that swarm catch because it was available but those came from massive b store um they sell on amazon i'm not affiliated with them um but i am looking at talking about some different some other bee Ooh. supplying companies um and talking about all that so oh tim good <laughs> Hey, Haas Tools from Georgia. I was just talking. I was like, I'm going to start. I'm like, first off, okay, if y'all don't know, Haas Tools is a lovely family. You guys need to go check out Greg and Mama Haas because they're constantly sharing really good gardening information, um, not just on YouTube, but on Facebook. And then seriously, check out their TikTok. I have been like binge watching Mama Hoss and I'm like Mama Hoss needs to come play <laughs> so she made a hibiscus she showed how she grew her like the hibiscus because oh, the nice. Hoss tools just they're starting to offer the hibiscus seeds this year nice um so she showed how like her whole process of you know growing it and then what to do with it, it. and oh, I'm like lovely, for the lovely. that is so hibiscus is so good <laughs> you too but yeah, no, it was, it's awesome. They're a great resource. Check them out. Their seeds are, well, y'all saw my tomato jungle, right? <laughs> but every, every plant that we've got growing, um, outside of the passion flower. I think most of the seeds they're all planted been have been hoss. And my problem, the only problem is with hoss in a good way is you start your seeds and you always start a little bit extra because you know germination might not take no they're all gonna take <laughs> and you're gonna end up with so many seeds so i've already planned it this year um my neighbors are probably going to be getting some we have three more two three more gardens too yeah i gotta we gotta we gotta help their gardens out right so but three yeah more, yeah three more gardens to help um to help grow on one one minute nope almost but yeah, check out Haas Tools, especially if you're planning your garden. This is the right time to do it. So, and then start mapping it out. And I plan on drawing mine out very soon. Um, and then starting to look at getting things ready, which I'm so, okay with. I'm ready. So BMAI Blue Marble Audibles and Imaging ask if you ever get to go to the Hive, Hive Life, Life Conference. Conference. I did not get to go this year. Um, we've had a lot going on. I did want it. I did want to go, um, but that time we were also still kind of recovering um, from being sick. And uh, you'll probably see this in my next video coming out. But you guys are here, and I'll go ahead and tell you. Um, I didn't want to like announced because I didn't want to scare anybody but um our whole family did end up getting getting the lovely variant that is out but we are we're all well everything everyone is okay so I'm glad I didn't make any plans on trying to go anywhere because I would have been really disappointed we were but yeah but it's all good um thanks Tim we're Tim, <laughs> Tim's saying hit that like button Aww. we are taking a lot so Really, what had happened was back uh, around Thanksgiving, uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, with everything going on, we just slacked yep. on a lot our of our, our daily, you know, herbal immune boosting stuff. And yes, so I knew it was going to happen. After right. two years, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, at it's going to hit us. But We're not that special. No. Uh, but I did feel like I finally did get invited to the party, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I was all dressed up. We had nowhere to go. We were all sick in bed. Oh, uh, love that coffee mug. So this one, where did you get this one? This uh, one was a gift. Oh, yeah, okay. From Teresa. This yeah. one was a gift from our herbal teacher, um, Teresa. And yeah. she was like, you need this mug. And so she handed it to me. And so it is so pretty. I don't know where it, come, where it came from. Um, but then this one. That's was, my favorite. This one. That was a gift. Too. I got you this one. That's right. This one came you gotta from. See the little bee like it's a little bee on it. No, forget the camera's right there. Um, but this one was handmade and. That's a couple years old now. Yes. It was handmade 
Farm Life Outfitter. Um, go check them out. It was handmade. I don't know if it was handmade from Michelle, but I think it was her really good friend. But they're really, it's a, I mean, I have the same one that's smaller, but in it's blue and they didn't have any more smaller mugs and they had only one more big mug. And I was like, oh, that's mine. I did. I was like, okay, <laughs> I got mine. you something. Cause I wanted it. I'm just kidding. It's great. Cause I, I'm a one cup of coffee a day person. And this is that's my like cup. two cups. It's okay. <laughs> it all fits in one cup. It's one cup. Yeah. Oh, my cup is really cute. I'll find out. I'll try to find out where she got it from and if it was handmade or not. But I don't think so. My I'm not sure. daughter and I are setting. We I set up a date for her and I, and we're gonna go play around with spinning, um, throwing pottery. clay. I don't know the terms. I'm not cool like that. But we're gonna try. We're gonna throwing pottery. Throwing is it throwing clay? Throwing pottery. I don't know. I, I don't just. Know. There's a part of me that wants a Patrick Swayze moment where, you know, you're, we'll she's have to like, have Charles I don't know, there. so romantic. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. Thank you, Bethany. Oh, somebody's got a same B cup. Terry does. Terry, where'd you get yours from? Is it see? the purple one? Yeah. Is it this one or that one? I bet it's that one. Hmm. Hi, it's Beehives. Nice How are you guys? Um, so, I am going to... Okay, I'm going to turn it for two seconds, and I'm going to show you what I do. Mm. So, on the side, there's a little valve. I have to make sure that that's closed for it to be able to have that whole vacuum seal. Um, it's already... Temperature-wise, it's already down to 40, 45 degrees, degrees and dropping. And then I'm just going to basically slide them in. You want me to go on the other side and hold that door? They need to make a little door stopper. Oh, while well, that works, if you just open it all the way up. Thank you, Mary. Aw, thank you, Mary. I didn't have to do that. I appreciate that. Now we get to buy more herbs. Yes. <laughs> I um, did just have some come in today. I know. You were excited about that. I am. If anybody kind of popped in and just kind of realized what we were doing, um, that is our, our Elsa. That's our freeze dryer from Harvest Right. And I, uh, I tend to, we tend to clean out our our freezer at least on Sundays and whatever is left over whatever we have that I don't necessarily want to throw away we put it in the trays um, and freeze dry it and kind of store it for later so it's just our way of trying to not be wasteful even though when you're on the farm you're not um, you're not you're really not wasteful uh, because something's gonna eat you know, any leftovers. Uh, can you let a tincture sit for too long before straining it out? I don't think that there is a timeline. Um, I've heard, I've, I've heard that 30 days is yeah kind of the average that you let it sit. Um, I have also, uh, been in the process of helping out, uh, with someone who we were pulling some tincture bottles and some had gotten a little old but they weren't um they weren't bad i mean i you know i would look for anything obvious on it maybe if the well it depends on what how it's much tincturing. sediments might be in there if so. it's dried out on top well, i don't 
think I didn't yeah. seem it didn't seem like there was a but I will I will double check on, that answer on oil blends I know yeah. they can sit too long oil blends can and they can turn rancid yeah um, and if your if your tincture material isn't covered um in whatever it is you know if you're using ACV or uh clear spirits or something like that you want to make sure that your your plant matter stays covered right uh, with a tincture matter because then and you have to make sure to shake it too every day right speaking um, of which we probably did you do the fire cider today nope i didn't we need to shake that, uh, that so with the freeze dryer the meat actually tastes and looks exactly like it did when you are you want to this? when you um before you froze before you did the freeze drying process it's our fire cider we are on day two weeks yeah we're about two weeks. we're about two weeks maybe three weeks it's our fire cider Look this out. video is coming up i finally finished editing it i actually had all intentions to have it out on thursday um but mama my mama rolls needed me so i was not mama rolls my mommy tasks <laughs> you took, was needed as i a was mama. needed as as I was needed, so I was not able to, um, I was not able to edit or put out the video, but it is edited and I think it's gonna go out on Tuesday. Gosh, we could almost add a little ACB in here. I might have to, I have got some. Do we? Can you freeze dry salt water? I don't know that. Don't think. No, because I feel like it would just be like turn back to salt. B man, your wife, your wife made some fire cider. Yay. That's exciting. Add honey to it. Um, it makes it taste a lot better. And you will probably, if you like a little bit of heat and spice, you're, you're gonna probably really like it. Uh, recommendation, don't brush your teeth and then take a shot of your fire cider. Um, I learned that lesson and my eye was like, Twitching. This twitch. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Mama rolls. I know. Okay, my mommy tasks. But I'm not I'm my daughter is not a baby, so that's mother I need you. Uh, yes. So which is best in my opinion, a freeze dryer or dehydrator? Um hundred percent freeze dryer. And the only reason why I say that is because I feel like there's just so many more things that I can do um with the freeze dryer versus a dehydrator. And then not only that, but the long-term storage wise, um, like, and I love my dehydrator. I do jerky and stuff like that. But long-term wise, this, the food is essentially gonna be stored and, and able to be preserved for 25 years uh, versus the dehydrator, which is longer, but, or which is shorter. Um, but I do love my dehydrator. I think I love my freeze dryer a lot more, um, especially because like the other night, this, these are the Mylar bags. Um, oh yeah, that's a good, so, uh, this is the Mylar bag that we store all the food in. I have to write down what it is and the date. Um, but this that we did the other, that's a cheap baby. Yeah, we did it the other probably the other week I just have to bring it down to the, the house but um, this is in here is something called chupe which is essentially like a seafood chowder but it's Peruvian um, and it's got shrimp it's got scallops it has I put fish. a lot it, it there's egg in it um, this is equivalent in their country to like uh, our country's chicken soup right um, so this is basically, it's a, it's a, it's called chupe de camarón. And if I botched up the pronunciation, basically it's shrimp chowder. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And so for, for this, like I wouldn't be able to dehydrate this. And if I were to can it, the consistency of the seafood would probably change. Right. Um, so in order to preserve it, which again, we are... One, I I am the type of woman that I don't know how to cook for small numbers, and I learned that from her. And I, so when you get us both in the kitchen... Oh, my gosh. I Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> we made 
we made chili. We weren't really planning on canning it last year or the year before? Uh, the year before. Well, I did it in my, like, the, the big 20-quart so roasting. Yeah, 22 quarts of chili. Got excited. So. And, and we and ended we up. And we canned quite a, quite a few I think, quarts. Yeah. I think we just finished it up, hence is why we, we had to make. We did. We just made. I mean, I, yeah. So somebody just asked, maybe explain the difference between what a freeze dryer oh. is and a dehydrator. So basically, and I do want to kind of learn the sciency of this because it is kind of it is kind of cool. Um, but dehydrating um, dries it versus basically, and this probably doesn't sound all official, but basically the freeze dryer, the process of the freeze dryer is it gets it so cold. And it goes through this process called sublimation. 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 Did I say that wrong? I said that wrong. Um, but it pulls all that moisture out. And, I mean, it, it, there's, there's no moisture in it for it to, to go bad. Right. Does that sound right? So it's, and it's not cold. Um, it's like space food is the right. best way to describe it. It's not dehydrated, though. Um, with the... With the reconstituting process, you do, you will add water. Um, I, I don't know if there's like a, a chart out there that exactly tells you like how much water to add, um, but I would kind of gauge it like what it looks like after it comes out. Yeah. Um, and adding just a little bit of water, it, you'd be at a time. Yeah, it'll it'll reconstitute, and so that's kind of why I like it because this time of year we make a lot of soup. And it's just nice to be able to, to not waste it and then be able to store it for a day where maybe I don't feel like making soup and I can just say, here, you know, enjoy this. So you've had some questions about freeze drying oh. mushrooms. I did freeze dry some mushrooms and they are in a no, jar. No, I don't have them in a jar because it's in a mylar bag. Oh. Don't know where it is yet. We're still putting all the herbs up in the apothecary and we had to go get some more jars. But there is a video. Yeah. Um, and I shared it probably back in October. Um, Octo no, it was November. It was back in November. My son found this beautiful lion's mane mushroom. And so I, I cleaned it up and I did go ahead and I sliced it and then um, put it in the freeze dryer that i can show them that yeah. this one that was my dehydrated line that was made. dehydrated so the um, there is a video on that i'll have to find it i don't even know what the name of that video was called but we wanted to save it before we were able to um before the frost came through uh so i grabbed it and then sliced it up put it on the freeze dryer and my intentions are to possibly um I wanted, I'd like to do a tincture on it or, or powder it. Um, or if we, you know, want to eat it again, oh, we can just are, reconstitute it. Those are ours. Yeah, yeah, but that's not, are, that's this. That's not freeze dry. Right? The other mushroom that I have that we um, just dehydrated, that was our oyster mushrooms that we found. Um, that actually my, that mom, my mom found. Um, but that was our lion's mane. So this is the dehydrated one and it, it kind of cooks it. It like changes the color and it, another thing about the dehydrator versus the freeze dryer is that it, um, the nutritional properties of whatever you are freeze drying stays. Right. Uh, and then versus, you also, you know, versus dehydrating it. And then also when you store your freeze dried food, you store it differently than your, your freeze-dried food than your dehydrated food. Well, you could do the mylar bags with the dehydrated, but the ex the length right. of time is what. It's a lot of work for something that you know might go bad a lot sooner. Um, sure. But I mean, if a dehydrator is what you have, you can absolutely do a lot of food preservation with your dehydrator. And strawberries are really good. Mushrooms are really good. Especially if you're not out foraging and you head to the grocery store and you might see mushrooms on sale, get them mm. <laughs> and, and put them up. You want um, to show them the blue garlic? I posted a picture of it. You I can, don't know if you're going to see it on that. I just added a little vinegar to it because of the, uh, yeah. 
have that one because I have to push push down for it to catch. There we go. So yeah, I don't know if you can see. Can you guys tell? See the the garlic how it turned. Changing colors to like this blue green you can fluorescent see it on the side right there in the front. Turn it back right there. Yeah, it's strong. It's doing its thing. Um. Okay. Sorry. Um. Ooh, canned salmon. Yes, that sounds very good. Um, I definitely one of our our goals this year is to go on a go on a deep sea fishing trip and I'm scared but I'm I actually know. not I do love fishing I absolutely love fishing um, that's my that is my jam and um, my husband and I we've been talking about it for years next month is our yeah next month next month we'll be married for 16 years and so one of our things that we both want to do is, is go on a deep sea fishing trip. So, and today I watched Get Wicked and they caught a 468 pound love, yellowfin oh, tuna. To Alaska, I wish. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of tuna. I mean, I, I love, I would love to be able to put, put some fish up in our, in our freezer. And that's just add another source. Yeah. You know, it's so long you, you know, you get after beef, chicken, and pork. It would be good to add a little bit of, add a little seafood in that. You're still kids, 16 years. Well, thank you, Tim. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a compliment. And maybe one day I will go to Alaska, but not right now. I might not leave, though. I think I would like it. Well, you were going to do Alaska. But... Yeah, we did. We had, an Alaska, we had a trip planned to go to Alaska, but um, it got canceled. Um, the best food source for I identifying uh, found mushrooms. Okay. Huh. You so have mushroom book here? I have a mushroom book. Oh, can you have it? The, the one that I was talking about possibly adding is the uh, Patterson. Peterson. Peterson. Yes, it's Peterson. Um, this one doesn't have any mushrooms in it, but I know the Peterson Field Guide. Um, this one's kind of cool because it's all medicinal plants, but there is a mushroom guidebook. Um, and they like in this book, it's nice, it has it basically broken down by color of the flower, so you can kind of identify that. But with the mushrooms, I'm not sure. This, I know I have a few mushroom books, yeah. We might have it. Let me see in that the one. house. This is just talking about medicinal. Um, he, the, he, some of the came across properties. this one and healing mushrooms and this is from taro isocopula isocopula it talks about 50 different mushrooms and that's something that i'm i'm excited to it's no picture or anything that is one i'm working on now there's a few apps that are really good with mushroom identification as long as you're in an area that has surface um but it's picture it's picture this mushroom edition i wouldn't fully rely on that but it is a good start you know and it, if you take a picture of it it'll be able to help identify it. and then i have shared there are some actually pretty good mushroom forums out there like on facebook or if you're not on facebook and you're on reddit or anything i specifically am a part of one that's for our state um and so it's kind of nice because i'm i they a lot of people will literally share all of their pictures of all of the mushrooms that they find and you know also if you're questioning what it is you can take you know all different angles of the same mushroom and I would almost guarantee that somebody in that group knows. Speaking of groups, there's a lot of foraging groups. And um, I was totally, um, I was scared to eat any mushroom that didn't come from the grocery store. And even some of the ones that came from the grocery store, I was skeptical. But um, over the years, we found some 
I've had a couple friends, and then Kaylee's taken up I've an I've been interest. like, here, eat this. And she's like, what is it? And she's like, it's a mushroom. <laughs> Just eat it. You're going to kill me. No, no, I'm not. But no, there's there are several uh, foraging groups. And if you're apprehensive about it, by all means, link up. Um, Facebook is a wonderful platform to be able to find like-minded people. And then the other part is, is there are... Um, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna make more of this. There are groups out there that will take you and together. Forge. Yeah. Yes. And so you can get one-on-one, hands-on, one -on -one, hands -on, um, and learn from somebody who really knows what they're talking about. So she is. Um, let's see. So somebody else asked. He asked. Um. Which is more expensive to run, the freeze dryer or the dehydrator? I'm going to say probably the freeze dryer but might it, be a little more expensive to run. It's I'm, We still haven't, there, there was a whole, actually, there was a whole chart out there that basically broke down the cost to running the freeze dryer, which is essentially like <laughs> a dollar. A session I mean maybe even less than that um, but we haven't quite gotten the full well we've ran it quite a bit in but here, we really haven't noticed much and I of a difference yeah um, so this is a small building um, itself and there's only that we only noticed one big difference and that's because we were trying to figure out how to run they, the split unit yeah but we've got that and figured out yeah um, Tim, psychedelic mushrooms? No, not those. No. Can I ever have enough mushrooms? I agree. Um, I agree. And that's one of the goals. If I can, if, if it works out, which I'm kind of looking at, I'd like to be able to start. Um, we have a lot of wild mushrooms that grow around here. Um, we're very yeah. blessed with lion's mane, with um, morels. Not as many morels as what I used to find um, before we moved out to this farm, but there are quite a bit of mushrooms out here that are good. I actually found my first reishi, mm -hmm. um, which got me so excited, you know, because that's one that I want to grow. I want to be able to, to, you know, have that. So I'll probably, I'll probably start inoculating more logs. As we go, along. as we go, yeah. um, or and I did try to bring in some morel mushroom spores, mm -hmm. but they did kind of wash, wash oh, out. But I yeah. did find them. Um, yep. So I don't know. You found we found you found we quite found a, a few, few different varieties of mushrooms here. Uh, so documentary fungus among us. I love that documentary. Um, and then the. There is a book that I just got that I wanted to start reading. Um, I didn't just get it. I mean, let me rephrase that. I have had it for a little while and I've been planning on reading it. And every time I pick it up, um, something happens and I end up having to put it down. So I haven't gotten to that point yet, but it's called Entangled. And it's, uh, it, it literally talks about the whole system of the mushrooms even going into the root system and how it's all connected. It's pretty interesting. So got a question on the inoculating the logs and do we have any logs done yet? Not yet, yeah. um, not yet. But I had some shiitake logs, but I didn't do them. Somebody, somebody did them for me. And um, it's the proper wood that that you have to have the right species for that right. to grow. And that, that mushroom we're right. familiar with or that, that thrives, off, thrives of. off of. And then um, it was a little process that we had to do. We had to soak it in water and then put it in a dark room. And we had to make sure the temperature was, you know, not well, too hot. Well, it's the humidity. Not too... um, I have a good friend that I plan on introducing you guys to a little bit more. I've, I've had a lot of people ask about the stained glass that we have mm, yes. here in the apothecary. Um, but her name is Alex, and she, the, she did uh, the stained glass piece in here. Um, she has uh, Blue Ridge stained Blue Ridge Glassworks is her is her business. 
but she is really knowledgeable about mushrooms and growing mushrooms and she's got this whole setup so I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to go check out her setup I'll bring the camera with me if she's comfortable with it um, but she is she is really knowledgeable and she shares she does not have a YouTube yet but she does share on Instagram and then she also uh, started up a TikTok. So if anybody watches TikTok and wants to see some of her work, it's it's Blue Ridge Glassworks. Um, and her name's Alex and she's really cool. And she's my mushroom friend. We literally go like through the woods <laughs> with our baskets looking for mushrooms. And one year we came up to a massive, massive tree that was down and we were probably about four days too late but the oh. whole tree was covered in chicken of the woods and we missed it and we were so mad <laughs> but it would have been we would have had probably at least four baskets full yeah, of chicken quite a bit so so people are asking how our how some people are saying their bees have really taken a hit good um uh some bees are not thriving they're losing bees some bees are thriving um we had what was it last week or the week before last week i think we had week before we had one or two days that it got pretty warm we had snow and yeah, then it got it was warm still, it was still too cold yeah we so, haven't gone into the bees nah, i don't i don't bother um, but we did watch them yeah. You know, we did see a lot of activity in the hives, but we didn't go go any further in no, that. I'll probably, once the temperature gets a good, I mean, I, I like the 60. I like to go in when it's at least, you know, when it's at least 60 degrees. That's me personally. Um, because you just never know if there's going to be a cold breeze or anything. And I would hate to absolutely chill, chill that brood. But when it gets a little bit warmer, we'll be going in and, and assessing for what's next, whether we're going to be making our splits. Um, but even then, we don't do that until after I at least see some drones, um, you know, because if, if I give them a, if I let them basically requeen, I want to make sure that there's some male bees so that they can properly mate and do what they're supposed to do. Um, Ella is hanging out. I was trying to get her to come up here, but she was like, no. It's cold. <laughs> she didn't want to. <laughs> so, let's see. It's freeze dryers freezing. That's going to take a little while. Yep, that's so. already down to 40 degrees. Yeah, so it's it's doing what it's doing. Um, This yeah. cold has definitely, I mean, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely really, really, uh, I'm hoping, I mean, I felt pretty good going into winter with our bees, um, but I, I never get too excited. Yeah. Um, they were still flying a couple of days ago, so that made me feel good. Um, but I, I just kind of, I hold my breath. I hold my breath. But I think at this point, I, I feel like we're, it's still hit or miss, you know, if it, if we get a warm up and there's not enough food storage, that's where you got to be a little bit like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Yeah. Um, because there's just nothing out there quite yet for them to, to start foraging on. So I'm kind of thankful for the cold right now because it's keeping them inside. Yeah. Keeping them more in their cluster. And when we shut them up this year for the winter, we really, um, were very selective on how much honey we Oh yeah, we leave we it took in bed. and that we left, so we know. We I know I think there's probably at least there were two colonies that I was kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel. I um, we and merged. we we did combine a few, but then the, those two I did, um, they are going to be the ones that are going to probably need to be cared for a little bit when it starts to warm up a little bit, and so. Right we'll make that decision as we as it starts to warm up and then yeah six more weeks hopefully we'll oh start to see warm weather i'm so ready i'm so, so ready to plant my garden it's taking everything inside of me to hold off a couple more weeks so somebody has asked um any idea how to get rid of the hornets that still exist even in the winter don't i don't um 
how warm does it get? Is it, what's your temperature like there? If it's cold, cold. Yeah. If it's yeah. warm, it would be one thing. You could set up traps. You could set up um, hornet, traps. hornet traps and lure them in that way. Um, Depends on what kind of hornets yeah. you have there too. So I'm not sure how to answer that one. I would call. No, there's there are some yeah. resources out there. I'll uh, I'll definitely think about that. But I know that there's some traps that you can you can set up. Um, so it's just kind of that's pretty much it. Um, some people have asked for yeah. flamethrower. Yeah, that's kind of my thought. Um, no, they have a purpose too. Yeah, I know. Good night, Karen. Uh, Somebody asked, does freeze drying, this goes back up from earlier, does freeze drying fish stink up the house? Well, we did freeze dry I the shrimp. I think so. And no, it didn't smell. The only thing that I will say had a little bit of a smell. So they, there's some, there's an option on there after you're freeze drying, before you take the frames out, before you take the, the trays out, mm -hmm. you have a, an option to warm up the trays. And it's wise if you're doing it barehanded, but if you're like me, who is just kind of like, we're just gonna wing it and just grab it out and then have like frostbite on your fingers because it's negative 40 degrees something. Uh, I learned that lesson. That was great. Um, but you can warm up your trays to where you don't kill your, your fingerprints, um, <laughs> unless you would like to get rid of your fingerprints that for any reason. That could be an option. Um, that's probably bad. I just said this on live. So, yeah. yeah. But anyways, we warmed up the trays after I had it full of onions. Yeah, the onions stunk. And I went to go open it up after it had warmed up. And I was like, oh. yeah. like it smelled like my teenager. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. It was really bad. I think so, we had. But I learned that. We did what? Purple onions? Yeah, it was. They were strong. Yeah, they were. They red, were. They were red onion. Yeah, yeah, red onion or purple onions. So, it's nice though now because if you're doing something and you just want to add a few onions into it, great way to do it. Well, the work's already done. Yeah. You know, you've already chopped it up, so it's already good to go. Um, no crying necessary. No. <laughs> but it is kind of funny because, like, the cons consistency is like styrofoam a little bit so when you go to eat it obviously if you don't reconstitute it it's like biting into like a cheese puff onion, but, onion. <laughs> but once you reconstitute it it turns right back into like an onion yeah it doesn't take long uh let's see um what are we drinking tonight what is this tea you made um, it. um well i'm i'm afraid to tell you what's in it because um, oh, I do know some of the things. There is some elderberries in here. Um, there is go lemon to grass. Uh, go to cola, which is great for your brain. Good night, Tim. Thank um, you for being here. Linden flower is in which it. Is, you're going to make me fall asleep tonight. It's going to be um, great. Ooh, elderberry syrup. Yes. Um, I have not done capsules. I bet you could. I wouldn't see why you wouldn't be able to. Mm, I don't know about that. I know they do elderberry gummies, so um, if you're able to ingest it like that, you they should. They will be heating it up. Yeah. Yeah, I will have to make some. I, I've That Levo oil, that's my plan. Make some elderberry gummies. Um, mm. But you can do tinctures with it. Um, Got it. Let's see. But syrup is a lot of fun. That is good. I did do some elderberry honey and that was delicious. And I infused it with that Levo machine. Um, hi there. Oh, six where'd nine you kids get that? I sent you guys over. Uh, you should be getting something in the mail soon. Thank you for ordering. Um, we have been blown away with all of the orders off of Etsy. I think I filled, I in one day I was full of of orders to go. I've been really trying to, during the week, if I get an order, I'm filling it the next day and we're getting it out because I don't know what the weather is gonna do. It's just easier for me to focus on getting things out right away. 
um, versus letting it back up. I've got a few orders to fill tomorrow, so I'll be doing that. Um, and then the tea blend that we blended up, Go Where the Love is sold out. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna we're be making mixing more. Up, yep, we're gonna make up another. We're gonna make batch. up more. I think it's gonna be tomorrow evening. I'm gonna make up more and plan on putting it on the Etsy shop, and then we made up uh, more of the herbal quell because that has been yeah, definitely that. a sought after one, and it, it is so good for you. Um, so we mixed up more of that, and I have to check and see how many are left. So. If you were worried that you didn't get them, um, we are gonna probably put on some other, we are gonna probably put some, some more on very soon, at least of the Go Where the Love is. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had a lot of people ask about the, having like a monthly subscription to where you buy and then every month you get a new herb blend. And at first I was like, yes, that's really cool. I wanna do that, but then, I pulled back a little bit because certain herbs that we are using in our blends um, might not work with that individual. Right. So there are some, you know, precautions to be to look at. Obviously, um, if you're pregnant, right? Or Nothing's and... going to necessarily, you know, uh, hurt. But it's just more or less to be aware of what you're doing. Yeah. So I've right. decided to not do the subscription. Not because right now. I don't want to necessarily, you know, but the next tea blend um, that we are starting to work on is going to be a, a, a deep sleep mm -hmm. tea blend. Um, and that might actually be the name. Deep yep. sleep. That could be. That could be the name of it. But we are going to focus on good sleepy time herbs including um, hops, including using the hop flower in in the herbs. And you guys, did you see, where's my hops at? Um, I can get it. It, oh, is. it is such a pretty flower. Um, so we're gonna play around with a couple of, it's in that one. We're gonna play around with a couple of blends, um, but I do want to, to focus on a good deep sleep. Um, and something that when you drink it, you, I want to hit the nerve lines. You know, I want to hit the relaxation. I want to focus on, on that. So this is the hops. Let's see, look how cool that flower is. So we're gonna mix up a lovely blend with the hops. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking hop flowers. I'm thinking lemon balm. I am thinking chamomile. Um, and then I had skull some cap. other, I did have some skull cap written down. And so those are kind of the ones we're, we're looking at. We're just going to focus on getting the right ratio and, get um, it. and making it taste good. So well. night, Alan. Mm, thank you for popping on. But yeah, so deep sleep is going to be the next tea blend. And then if you guys have any suggestions or interest send it to us you know we are we are mixing and blending and playing and we have formulated around how many tea blends that we've that we've already kind of set I, aside to we have probably 30 yeah. different we have so we've been playing i, For I like say two years I, i'm know? saying playing with the tea blends because as we've become more familiar with what the herb uh, tastes like and the actions. actions, right? So we've had straight tea. We've blended it with things. Mm -hmm. We've 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 learned what we've liked. We've learned yeah. what we don't like. Like and for me, yeah. I am not a fan of lavender yep. in my tea. That just I don't. I'm not a fan of it. Um, See, and I like a little bit, a little bit, but I don't want it to taste like I'm eating a bar of soap. No, you know. No. So like. Um, but oh, yeah. yeah, so there, there are some teas that we are like, yes, this tastes really good. I am not a fan of valerian. Nope. Um, That's taste that smells like stinky. It Cheetos. smells like, you know, I mean, it doesn't oh. smell good, but you know, Jennifer has asked, where can I purchase a tea kettle? So I will uh, tell you this. Um, I have the one that we use. The one that we're using, um, is you put a link. Yes. This is the one. 
this is the style that we use. And the, what we like about it is it has the um, tea infuser in it. So you can just mix your, mix your tea, put it in it and fill it with water and then hit the button and it turns on. Um, a word of caution. Oh yeah, don't, don't, don't oh, oh, two things. Don't overfill with water and don't overfill with herbs because if you put too much water, too much herbs, it's gonna, your tea, you'll be able to tell your fortune. <laughs> because you're gonna have, you're gonna have tea blend in your cup. It's yeah. gonna bubble over and get all over the counter. That and, one, I wanna say it's probably around like $30 or yeah. so. Um, and it, we, we found that on, um, we actually got it off of Amazon and I did go ahead and put that, that oh. exact tea blend or tea kettle in the Amazon storefront. Um, so we got a question about your Etsy Ella shop. Ella wants thing. a cup of tea. I just got a, I just got a text. <laughs> she said, save me a cup of tea. Yes, Ella, if you're watching, I will save you a cup of tea. Um, your Etsy shop's name? The Etsy shop is the Honeystead, but it's one word. And if you look under, you can type in the Honeystead Etsy and it'll take you there. Um, but then if you also look under my videos, I'll put the link. Um, I will put, I typically put my Etsy shop information there. And then as well as if anyone is interested in, in that same tea kettle, um, I have our Amazon store front on that. And again, it's it's basically, it does help support our channel. Um, we get a little bit of commission off of it and, and it helps, you know, going back to the bottles and, and everything for here or for stuff that we need for the bees. Now, finally, Home Bama has said, KitchenAid has a great one with oh, an yes. infuser and yes. different temperature settings. That might that, be my next yeah. investment. <laughs> so we need like three more of these. Um, she, we have to, so this is the one we keep in our I house. Keep stealing. <laughs> so she's like, with everything. <laughs> and then the other day we were coming up here and I hear, whoa. And all of a sudden I see her and she's down. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, going to practice my snow angel yes, techniques. <laughs> your snow angel technique looked painful. So Help me up for it. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, hey, that's great. Terry's growing uh, chamomile this year. I love chamomile. And that is probably my... It's such a sweet little flower, yep. you know, but it does so much. It does so, so much. So, um, Terry says, receive my herbal plug yesterday. Yay! How much of the herb blend should I start with for one cup? Uh, if you looked on the... Uh, what did I say? A teaspoon? I, a I would spoon. start... I, I would start with maybe up to table. two teaspoons. Um, it, and it depends, you know, eight ounces of water, 12 ounces of water. Grab those little things. Oh, yeah, these look cute. I need so, to find these. And yeah, those. my husband got me these for Christmas, um, with my little stocking stuffer. And this is just a personal little um, infuser. And what's kind of nice, it's stainless steel, so it won't rust. But if you look, you it's got a scoop you slide it in there and i'm gonna say that's probably about a teaspoon and a half um and then you slide the screen down and drop that in your teacup and let it infuse um uh, okay so i would say it's going to probably be at least a, at least a, a teaspoon and a half of that because it's going Start with maybe two teaspoons. Two teaspoons, that's what I figured. Yeah, about two teaspoons to about six to eight ounces. We want to find more of these. I did find them on there. They are on Amazon, and so, I could add it to, uh, they were cute, and you just put it right in. Especially yeah. what was nice about this is when we're mixing blends, we can we can taste small it. small sample. Um, instead of doing a whole batch, and we're like, nope, this a isn't pound good. later. Yes. No, we don't like this. Again, this is awful. We don't know how to cook for a small amount of no. people. So no. we don't know how to make tea blends. I love the fact that we can make them and share them because yep. we make enough tea blends for 50 uh, people. Says, do you have single tea infusers? I have two, but they aren't the best and, and lets lots of herbs through. This is really cute. And I will, before the night is up, I will add this one to our Amazon storefront. Um, and you don't have to buy through the Amazon if you don't want to, but it was just too perfect. Yeah. 
So I, we had to figure. There was no I know, instructions. I had to figure it out. I was like, <laughs> how do we use where it? Where do we? I'm looking at it because this is how it comes, and you're like, oh. I can't put anything in it. Um, but then, if you want to, all you do is just pull it up, scoop it in your tea blend. So see, it opens it all the way up. I showed him. Yeah. So cool greetings stuff. from the frozen tundra of New Hampshire, Celtic Roots yeah, Farms. Greetings. Hi, Celtic Roots. Yeah, it's, I bet it's really cold. So, do you, um, yeah, as far as the single tea infusers, so far this is the yeah, only one I've found that doesn't go through. Um, I have some gauze bags that are pretty good, but then you got to clean them out and all that kind I of good I stuff. I thought I saw somebody ask about <sighs> allergies. Yes, it's down here. What was the best tea, what's your best allergy blend tea? I'm going to... Um, stinging nettles, definitely, I would yeah. probably hit on. Um, that would help a lot. But I'm going to I'm needs... gonna go to the honey. Well, I... yeah, the honey is probably... Yeah. If you can get some local honey, um, get it as much as you can and do it daily. Whether you do it in tea or you add it in your coffee or you just do a spoonful. If you can... And it has to be raw. Um, raw, straight from the hive, honey. Um, no, you're not, being not the store, not the store bought stuff, but that that would you would be amazed at how much that's gonna help you. Yep, and a spoonful every single day. And then also too, you know, the allergies, that's a very broad well, um, what's triggering them. Right. Is it seasonal? Um, is it an herb? Because then we could, you know, it, it might be right. Yeah. So, a lot of people are allergic to asters, and when you have aster sensitivity, then there's a lot of herbs you, you don't can't want to use. Do certain ones, but so um, but very I mean, stinging nettles is really good for relieving yep. the the that, and then also helping helping with the, um, and then pineapple. Yeah, surprisingly, pineapple because of the, the bromelain. Yep. So, uh, we did a whole we did a video on making like a pineapple decoction, like a pineapple tea. It tasted like cider. Oh. It's so good. Mm -hmm. um, and I am craving pineapple. Again. I know. And all of a sudden now I'm seeing pineapple tea. I know. I'm like, yes. They boiled it. So, again. and then another question about the plastic bottle beehives. Oh, I did see those. Those are so cool. Yeah. Those are so cool. I'm still. But I don't know if it would, I don't know if it would work really well. So yeah, maybe not around here. I don't know. Mainly because for us, like we, we raise bees um, and sell our, our nukes. Um, and with that availability, we have to be able to properly inspect all of our colonies to make sure that there's no other, you know, no forms of uh, disease or anything like that. Making sure our, we are selling and offering good, healthy bees. Um, so with that, our state inspector comes out and we have to do a, a full on hive inspection and test for mites and and do a good look over um to a good portion of our colonies so jennifer is a beekeeper Yay. that's a, a plus and as far as she's looking for more oh more herbs, herbs. okay well we are still planning on offering um come march we're going to be offering uh, that one-on-one -on -one ability. There's a lot of herbs we could kind of generically offer, um, but what we found is in order to give some good um, recommendations for some herbs that are going to help heal yourself and help your body, um, support your, your body basically right. through this, it, it just it might be a little easier to get that one-on-one -on -one ability um yeah. so we are going to be offering that and we i think we've kind of looked at our dates and we're kind of talking about our options and looking at timing and we're gonna try to be available um come march by setting up online appointments and you get us for a couple of hours and then we can mix up and blend up and send it your way yeah um, that's it's coming and hanley's homestead agree, agrees on the honey yeah um, they have numerous repeat honey customers that a spoonful each morning says it's done wonders for their allergies i also do some really good deep breathing when mm -hmm. i do my hive inspections i mean i can feel it when i'm like Ugh. you know especially late like in late summer with the goldenrod for me 
Mm. Um, and then, so it's the goldenrod gets me every once in a while. The mold gets me. And then not and the not, grass. Well, no, I'm saying like from the bees, the pollen. Oh, so oh, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. The goldenrod messes with me um, in the fall, but then the um, for Cynthia's, what are those? Are oh, the little yellow flowers? Those la- letter yellow flower bushes. For Cynthia bushes, they kill me. I'm I die, <laughs> but me. I try to open up my colonies and I breathe um, because every I mean it's a power punch and I do it later um, during the hive inspections like towards one of the last ones because I walk away and I'm like <clears throat> you know doing one of those. There's a lot. Uh, uh, matter of fact, your dad sent me something mm-hmm. where we've noticed that oh the breathing yeah, yeah a lot breathing of, a lot in of different company or countries will do that yeah breathing in the hive you know or breathing while you're working the hive yeah. and um i mean yeah. it's Some pretty cool stuff but yeah. we have been on for an hour i cannot believe it's been over an hour oh, and goodness. i am gonna go um finish up on some of the things that we've got to do but i just i'm Aww. glad that we were able to pop in and do a quick live oh what so uh, Brandy Antonelli, I think is her last name. I purchased both teas and the honey last Monday. It's wonderful. Aww. The honey tasted just like the honey my great granddaddy used to pull from his hives. And he lived in Keoki, Virginia. Virginia. I don't know where that's at. I'm going to have to look. I don't know where that's at, but I bet it's the bees are working the same type of plant. So that's really cool that that brought back that memory for yeah. you. And that's Terry, really special. Terry asked if you have your hives registered in your state. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I do. Um, we have our apiary registered. Um, one, because I kind of want to be on the radar on what's happening in the area with other beekeepers. And, um, you know I, know, I know it's really intimidating to think of your bees and your apiary being, you know, registered and under state inspection. Um, but it's not as scary as what you think. And I love our state inspector. I hope that, I mean, we've, I've been working with her for a couple of years now. And I mean, I just, I adore yep. her and it's, it's not scary. You know, yeah. Don't you're be not intimidated. You're not, it's not a pass fail, you know, it's not one of those. So definitely. And then that will, before um, I finish recording for the beekeepers course, so now I'm finishing editing and setting it up and putting it together. And so that will more than likely be out, which I kind of planned on this coming month. Um, it's gonna be a beginner beekeeping course. That's all gonna be online. And then also have videos. And I'm looking at um, having printouts for everyone that, that signs up for the course. And then I, there's still an option and I've got to figure out if I can do it through this course. Um, but I would like to do a private group um, for everyone who has signed up for the course, like offer that one-on-one question and answer opportunity. Um, but that's that's what I'm still learn- looking at and making sure that I can do um, through, through the program that we're gonna do the course through, but it should be if everything works well, I would imagine that it would be out in the next week or two. That's so, my goal. <laughs> That's Celtic, my goal. Celtic Roots has a question. It's, she says it seems to be hard to find anyone that's selling honey butter. Do you have an mm-hmm. idea why it might be difficult to find? I tend to make it myself, but the consistency is never the same. Um, I have bought... Uh, is it like... Like whipped honey, butter yeah, like or whipped. like honey actually mixed in with butter itself um i'll have to look at that well, i know yeah. like creamed honey yeah um, that's what like I you would... can get the creamed honey and you can make the creamed honey uh we've made it i've made it once it's good with cinnamon it is on, really good oh my gosh it English really, muffins. Really yum so i'll have to find out about that and that yeah. might be a fun video to to try to to share with you guys but anyways we could be here all night talking, talking yep. about everything. Ella um, wants her tea. I know. But She's already texted you again. Yeah, I know she has. <laughs> you guys, I'm so glad that you all popped on and did this surprise impromptu food preservation or beekeeping talk mushrooms. with us. Mushrooms. Um, that was fun. But 
we will i will try to put out again on our next live sundays typically have been like the best days for this sunday nights mm -hmm. for us um so yeah you guys have a really good night and thank you all for popping in and being a part of this live and having some good conversations with us and we will keep you all posted night guys